name is Gianna Stewart and I'm an instructor at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. This evening I'd like to take a closer look at and get inspired by an artwork by painter Helen Tor. Evening Sounds is a beautiful composition in lavenders, blues, runes over a silvery background with punches of rusty orange. There's no obvious subject at first, but abstract shapes seem to allude to piles of rocks or perhaps planets receding into space at the top of the composition. Whatever you see, Tor masterfully uses tints, tones, and shades to create this enchanting composition. Tor was a modernist, working alongside friends like Georgia O'Keeffe and partner Arthur Garfield Dove. In fact, the two shared a houseboat together where their small studio was. Working in confined, shared spaces is perhaps something we can relate to today. Let's get started. Set the tone, put on some music, light a candle, and let's get to work. You can use materials from around your house for tonight's project. Paper, watercolor paper, some spare cardboard, whatever you happen to have is fine. Small scale is okay too. Remember that we're inspired by Helen Torr's piece this evening, and she worked on a really intimate scale. The important thing is that you have color to work with. Any mark making tools that you have that are various colors will do. It could be crayons, color pencils, markers, or even paints. Whatever you have access to will work for us. And if you only have a few paints, the primary colors will be all you need and perhaps some gray and black. Take a closer look at Helen Tor's Evening Sounds. You may notice shapes receding into space towards the top of the composition, lines of rusty oranges that draw you through, and these rocky shapes. Are they blue? Are they violet? They're sort of these subtle tones that shift within them from a really dark blue violet to a little lighter, or perhaps setting gray or black. These tints and tones are what we're gonna use for our own composition this evening. Look at the colors. What do you see? Are they bright and vivid? Or are they a little more moody with mixes of grays and black within them? First step for our project is to set up your palette. That essentially means organizing colors. So if you've got crayons or pencils, go ahead and organize them sort of rainbow order. This evening I'm choosing to stay within the violets and blues and grays that Tor uses. If you've got markers or pencils, do the same. Think rainbow order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And if you've got paints, you can truly set up your palette. Acrylics, tempera, oils, whatever you have access to and are comfortable using, um, that can be your medium for this project. So I happen to have watercolors. I like to set up my palette in a rainbow order circle. So you start by adding the primary colors in a triangle. Red, blue, and yellow. And with watercolors, of course, you'll need water. I like to have two waters, one for cleaning the brush and the other for adding more water to the pigments. So you can go ahead and if you're using watercolor, add some water to each of these. using acrylic so you can st skip this step and I'm gonna go ahead and take each of my primary colors blue yellow and red and add a little bit of each to either side of the primary color so I'll start with yellow 
A little to its left, a little yellow to its right. Go ahead and clean my brush. Next up, my blue. And add a little bit in that well that I added yellow to, and then a little bit to its other side. cleaning my brush in between dipping into each color so that I uh, don't muddy them up just yet. So adding a little here and a little here. And then you can go ahead and mix up those colors. So between red and yellow, I'm making an orange. Between red and blue, we've got a violet. between blue and yellow, we have green. So you've basically got the rainbow in a circle. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And we can use our palette to kind of think about color theory a little bit. On this half of the palette, we've got primarily warm colors, reds, orange, yellows. And if we look at Tor's painting, we don't really see a lot of those, just sort of a flash of some orange hues in there. She's working primarily on the cooler side of the palette, so violets, blues, greens, and specifically she's really working between violets and blues, two colors next to each other on the color wheel. So we can call that an analogous color scheme. Okay. So for our piece tonight, inspired by Helen Tor's work, we're not going to make an exact replica of her work. We're making elements of a collage that speak to the things in her work. Tints, tones, and shades. So, to begin, let's start with tints. A tint is a color plus white. So, you can make that using dry media Let's start with crayons. Let's say I want to make the tint of purple. I simply take purple and add white, which in the case of drawing means lightening up the pressure and allowing the white of the page to show through. So here we have violet or purple and its tint. We can make a gradient between the more saturated hue and its tint, like the gradients we see forming in Helen Tor's piece. We can do the same using pens or markers. You may want to go from hatch marks to cross hatching. So there we have a bunch of tints done with dry media. Let's go ahead and try it in paints. So if you are working in acrylic or tempera, you can simply go from the color to adding the color and some white to create its tint. In the case of watercolor, uh, we don't have white in the palette. We use the white of the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a color. Let's do blue. And if this is blue, its tint is adding more water so that more of the page shows through. So we have blue and its tint. In this medium, the paint will only travel where there's water. So let's say I want to make a sphere in watercolor. I'll create a circle with just water on the page. So you have a wet circle. And then I'll go ahead and add the pigment within there and you'll see it only travels where there's water on the page and it will stay within the shape you created. Now perhaps I really want to push the value in this and make it go from very dark to much lighter. I can keep adding more value around that edge of the sphere and allow 
the pigment to travel through the water. Have fun, experiment going from dark to light gradients um, in whatever medium you have available. Okay, let's try the same with shade. So a shade is when you take a hue and add black, going from more saturated to less. And then instead of leaving the white of the page shown through, we add black. You can see this creates a much more sort of moody surface than our tints. And last but not least, we have tones. A tone is when you have a color and instead of adding white or black, you add gray. So we'll try that with blue. There we have the tone of blue. Let's try that in watercolor. So we go, here I have some haze gray, which is great for creating tones. Let's add that to our palette. So we can mix some blue and some Payne's Gray to get the tone of blue. And here you can see how the tone compares with the hue. It's a little grayer, a little more stormy, a little closer to Helen Tor's palette. Let's try the same with violet. A little violet, a little Payne's gray, And there we have the tone of violet. When using paints, alternately you can try toning a color down, like blue, by adding its opposite, like orange. So now we've got a lot of collage materials to work from. I think I'm gonna take um, something to use as the background of our project. I've got some cardboard. I'm gonna see what happens when I add a gray background to that using watercolor. I'm gonna go ahead and experiment with a larger brush. I'm trying to use a lot of that Haynes Gray. And let's see what happens. Here you're sort of setting the stage for your composition. Perhaps you're inspired by whatever tunes you've set in the background. You can imagine Helen Tor may have heard the sounds of Gershwin being played from the radio of her partner Arthur Dove in the houseboat they shared. In fact, Dove painted a piece around the time of Tor's evening sounds that has very similar color palette that he references a Gershwin piece in. So Tor's work sort of has this illusion of perspective, right? It seems like it recedes towards the top of the composition. So perhaps you can use your brush strokes to create that illusion as well. Perhaps you want to experiment with adding some of those sort of lightning bolts of rusty orange that she has. Maybe add 
with some blues and violets, toning them down with gray or their opposite. So when you've got a background you're happy with, you can go ahead and let that dry. Then let's clean up our space and get ready to collage. For the collage, you'll want the tints and tones and shades that you've made, some scissors, some glue, and perhaps some round objects to create circles of your own. So, now we take the things we've made and start thinking about shapes that you want to see in your piece. I think I'm going to take a nod from Helen Tor and use primarily circular shapes. Hers are more organic, sort of rocky pieces. I'm going to go for not quite perfect, but circular. Go ahead and cut those out. See, think about scale. Do you want all of your shapes to be the same size? Is it more interesting to have them vary, like in Tor's work? Do you want repetition? Circles from the same composition that you made? You can even play with the shapes that you've already got. Maybe. We want to add some more silvery tones. Imagine you had synesthesia. What colors, what shapes would you see from the sounds you're hearing? Time to think about composition. How do you arrange your shapes on the plane? There's infinite possibilities. Which one do you choose? Think about scale. Do the shapes get smaller as they head in one direction? Or are they evenly dispersed throughout the page? Think about value. Do the shapes go from dark? To light? To colors, keep your eye moving and bouncing throughout? Do they relate to the music you're listening to? Play around, have fun. And when you land on a composition you like, you can go ahead and glue the shapes down. In collage is with painting and drawing. Whatever you put down last sits on top. So work back to front. The shapes can go off the page we can fold them over or crop them later. This sort of implies movement.
remember, we're not replicating Helen Torres' piece, we're simply inspired by it. So, place the pieces in a way that speaks to you. And there you have it. Your very own composition from this evening. I hope you had fun creating your own work. Great job. Now it's time to step back and take a look. Compare and contrast. Are there any similarities between yours and Helen Tor's work? What differences are there? What affected your choices? Did the music you were listening to make a difference? Who you shared your space with? Its size? The time? Whatever influenced your work, take some time to enjoy it and have a wonderful evening.